Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Backwoods by Most High Design. It plays one to four players, takes roughly one to two hours to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Backwoods, you're playing in the 1830s as someone who has forged down the Colorado River and then got stranded and stuck somewhere in the woods. Your objective? To make it back to the fort and survive. Along the way, you're going to meet tribespeople, dangerous wildlife, and hopefully some resources, along with food and water, to get you what you need in order to successfully achieve your mission, which is basically to survive. The game comes with many variants, and you can choose to play among the different adventure modes throughout the game, whether it is to complete certain objectives or just mainly to get along through the path as you proceed through the backwoods. Gather your supplies in your character and get ready to go as we take a look at the game's setup, how to play, and then of course my review, and of course if you're interested, links down below in the description. Beginning of the game Backwoods setup is fairly simple. Each player is going to get a player board and they are differentiated by the different animal symbols in the middle section of the board. Every single player is going to gather seven cubes and place them on their vitality, survival, fitness, combat, opportunity, insight, and hypothermia. Then they're going to get a red, a blue, a green, and a purple cube and place them on health, faith, poison, and disease respectively. Uh, you're going to be determining where they go specifically as I proceed through the setup. Each player will get a character, which is going to give you a passive ability and a bonus amount of points of a certain type in the bottom right hand corner, along with of course your name, and maybe a little bit of flavor text as well. You're going to decide whether you want to be ranged or melee, and it, one to two players will get to choose as ranged, and one to two players will pick melee when playing a four player game. Everybody is also going to get a specific unique trait. You can draw them randomly from the deck, or if it's your first time playing, maybe you should suggest that you choose one that you would like. Uh, range players will get a, a sling, and other uh, melee players are going to get a club. And every single player is going to get passive bonuses, and those passive bonuses will come on a card. Uh, those cards are going to be uh, give, giving you certain benefits as you progress along the four different tracks in the game, vitality, survival, fitness, and combat. If you're playing a certain number of players, whether it be one or two players or three or four, you're going to get a certain number of trait bonuses. To start the game off, if you're playing with a two or less player game, we'll start with that. You're going to get four points and you can put them in any amount in survival, fitness or uh, combat and vitality. Uh, if you're just not new to the, if you're new to the game and you don't know what to pick, just go ahead and put one in each, along with any benefits, of course, that your passive gives you. Each player is going to start with eight HP, a zero faith, the poison and disease tokens will start off of your board. Hypothermia will be at negative one, insight will be at zero, and opportunity will be at four. Then give every single player resistance checks, heal checks, and scout checks based on the symbol that they are on or passed up along the four tracks, which means that you're at least going to get one of each to start the game off. Take the main board of the game, which is also going to be the round tracker, and place the owl on the explore track. Then place the main character of the game, or your party member, on the hut, or basically the village area you'll be starting with. It doesn't have any symbols on it other than just a little uh, cabin. And then take one of the X's and place it on there, meaning that it has been explored. There's a region deck. You'll take 12 cards off of the top after removing the fort from it, and then remove those 12 from the game. Put the fort back in the deck, shuffle it, and that will be the amount of regions you'll have for the game's specific scenario you're playing. Take out the 12, 22, 11, and 8 card from the event deck, and give uh, the starting player or players a companion. Here I have Samson. He's my faithful dog who will help me throughout the game. Shuffle the knight deck, shuffle the trait decks and companions, um, pioneers you probably won't need anymore if you've already gathered one, and then of course the battle deck won't need to be shuffled. Uh, battles and items specifically are going to be chosen based on the events that take place, or if you want to forge something, so they can be in order and even organized if you would like. Remember for events, you're because you're going to be drawing them from the bottom of the deck, you can simply shuffle them, keep the event side face up and the result side face down, and always draw from the bottom of uh, the deck and place onto the top so you never know what's going to come next. And also to track, you can place these little X markers on your passive track area to basically give you an idea of what bonuses you're going to have throughout the game. Finally, each player should receive one die that we'll be utilizing for all their skill checks in the game, 
and you're going to fill the bag. In the booklet, it'll tell you what type of things to fill the bag with, but typically it's going to be three bees, three wasps, a certain number of, uh, of water, a certain number of uh, wood, and a certain number of the rope. And you'll be utilizing that as you go through the foraging phase of the game. Otherwise, set aside all the additional tokens that, you know, that are gonna have a dot on it. Those ones will never go in the bag. And all of the extra resources, which will go in the bag. Uh, and move aside any other tokens that you may or may not use, just somewhere in a pile or away from the board, as well as all the player boards and all the extra stuff that you're not using in the game. And that's the basic setup of Backwoods. You'll be playing the game Backwoods over phases. And there's a certain number of them throughout the game. There's six. The first one is Explore. Forage, craft and heal, event and battle, eat and drink, the night phase, and then of course there's like a twilight interim phase in there, and then you'll rinse and repeat. Once you're able to complete the objectives of the game, or if one of your characters dies when they cannot be resurrected, then that will trigger the ending. If you die, you're out. If you complete the objectives, you win. I'm going to explain the basic mode of the game, which is simply the two objectives, finding the fort, and succeeding from there, or if one character dies and can't be resurrected by healing or hell or faith, then they're, then you're out of the game. To start with is the explore phase. And it's explained here on this mat here, which means that you take actions and they're scout actions. Every player should have at least one scout check that they can use. Whenever you make a check, you roll a die, you add any bonuses and negatives. And then if you have an eight or higher, you succeed. If you want, you can choose to do scout checks, which will let you flip over the regions and kind of take a look, or you can kind of just enter blindly. And you'll be moving your character up to two spaces until you find an un discovered location and then your character will simply stop and you'll do whatever that is. If you're successful in taking checks it'll help you uh, decide which regions you want to take from or otherwise you'll simply just move into a location maybe your scout checks just fail and then you will proceed to see what happens. Each of the regions has unique benefits or negative benefits uh, depending on maybe you have mm, a stream there or a river maybe a flood or a hurricane or who knows what could happen to you in, in the journey but it'll tell you on the bottom right and bottom left areas of the card that you venture on to. Then after you do that your explore action is done and you're working together as a group and you'll be taking them in order um, and then you'll move on to the forage action. Uh, forage is pretty simple. You have a certain number of opportunity to be, to be in the game with which is four. Some people have more like for instance if you have Brandon here you're going to get ten because you'll get four plus a bonus six and you can spend it to forage. One is going to let you add resources to the bag here. Uh, in order to add a resource to a bag, you have to spend an opportunity, and then you'll be able to take a certain number of resources based on the opportunity that you've spent and put it in the bag. If you would like, you can also pull from the bag and place them on your character board. Now, you'll start with one meat for each character, but if you spend maybe two opportunity, you can pull from this bag here and get something of a reward. Sometimes it's going to be something like a log, which you can use to furnish items, and other times it could be like a wasp or a bee which will become give you maybe disease or perhaps even poison ability effects that will negatively, um, <laughs> negatively enhance your uh, objective. Uh, add additionally, too, you can use your uh, opportunity to increase your faith. Um, now, there's, there's different options for how that works, and you can choose to use faith or not in the game, but you can use two opportunity to raise your faith by one, or three to raise your faith by two. And faith has a bunch of different abilities, which you can look at this track here and it will tell you what you can do. The most notable being you can pay minus seven faith to raise the dead, meaning you could bring a character back to life after they have died. But there's a bunch of other beneficial effects that you can use with faith. But that's all that you do in the foraging phase. Put stuff in the bag and take stuff out of the bag and then increase your faith level, which you can then in turn use that during the game whenever certain abilities or uh, events happen that will require faith to be used. Crafting and healing. Crafting and healing will allow you to use the heal check. You'll flip this over if you would like to use it, and you'll choose to either heal a disease or a poison, or you can choose to heal 2 HP to a character, roll the die, get an 8 or, eight or higher, and succeed in doing so. If you want, you can spend these little herb tokens to give the entire party the benefit. Maybe if everybody's poisoned, you can roll for poison, succeed, and then use one of these guys, which will then allow you to give all players poison resistance. After you have chosen to do healing, uh, spe your special healing checks, which you can use as many as you have, uh, then you can also choose to craft items. In the item deck, it will tell you unique cards in the game that you can craft. And there's a whole bunch of them, whether it be a fire, to a rope, to maybe a log trap. And you'll be able to spend your resources that you've gathered from the bag during your time of foraging, and then you can place them in front of you. And you can utilize them as a party to kind of protect you or help you along your journey. 
After that, then you're going to go ahead and head over to the event or battle. You'll take a card from the bottom of the event deck, read it, and then do what it says. It'll give you options most of the time, and then after you choose an option, you'll read the results based in the back. Sometimes that will put you into a battle, and other times it's going to do something positive or negative for you based on if you have something to give or if you went to a certain area. Uh, they're kind of all random as to what they do, but basically it's a random event deck that will give you benefits or negatives depending on what happens throughout the game. After you've done your event and uh, you don't have a battle, you'll just move to the next phase. If you do have a battle, you'll take place, uh, there'll be a one round uh, battle, which will take place just kind of like how foraging takes place. You'll be rolling to do damage, attempting to succeed in a uh, roll check, doing damage plus any benefits to your combat that you can give. If you can defeat the animal in one round, then you have succeeded in combat. The, the, the combat will also involve the animal attacking you, and depending on the number of players that you're playing with will determine the animal's HP, and of course any effects that it will, it will have. And other animals will sometimes make you fight it back and forth, round after round, until it has been defeated. It really just depends on the battle. But typically it's just one round, and then you move on to the next phase, which is the eating and drinking. You'll need to have one water and one food for each character in order to not take damage. If you are not able to eat or drink, you're going to lose HP. If you ever hit zero, that's one way you can die, other than poten potentially an animal attack. Then we move on to the night phase. And during the night phase, you're going to read one of the night cards. And the night cards do a bunch of different things, usually involves flavor, and then it'll tell you something like each pioneer loses a food ration. Then you'll move into the twilight phase. And twilight phase is basically the cleanup phase. It will give you a certain benefit to the different effects that you might have. Like for instance, you're going to give bonus HP based on your vitality. You'll increase your opportunity by four. And um, you're also going to give yourself a certain amount of HP. You'll move the hypothermia up one. Um, hypothermia is going to basically make you start taking more and more damage as you get more hypothermic because you don't have any way to heal yourself. Um, except for maybe if you have a a forest fire, a forest fire, a <laughs> fire, a fire pit, then you can kind of prevent hypothermia, right? Um, and basically it's just the clean up that step. And once you've cleaned up, you'll move on back to the explore phase, in which case you will do your checks, you'll have all of your skill checks resolved, uh, ready to go again, and uh, you'll flip over the next space, hopefully find something good. <laughs> and uh, maybe you'll find like a night stalker and you have to fight a bad guy there. But yes, your objective is to hit this fort here and complete objectives. And there are different objectives here in the game. And as you can see, there's four in the middle of the objective track. One of them is you need to turn in a certain number of furs to a location. Another is you can visit seven different regions. Uh, you can trade with the Indians once, which is going to net you some benefits. And of course, it will also give you an objective. And then also you can turn in these little, uh, these little plant tokens here as well to the fort. And if you can complete two of those by the time the game ends, and of course reach the, the fort and mark it as being cleared, and every time you hit an area and finish it, then you've basically cleared that area, uh, then you'll win the game. Otherwise, if somebody hits zero HP, doesn't have the amount of faith to have somebody else resurrect them, the game is over for backwoods. Now, like I said, there's a ton of different variants in the game, a ton of different choices, and I kind of just glossed over everything, but I think you understand how the game works. You move on throughout the different rounds of the game, you take their specific, uh, you take everything in the round that you can gather and you utilize it, and also any of the negative effects that it might associate with, and then you rinse and repeat. Um, and then if you can complete the goals of the game, you win. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about my review now. So the first thing I'll say about Backwoods is the rule book is challenging. Um, in fact, there is, I believe, a better one online. And also, I would also strongly suggest you take a look at somebody's playthrough or walkthrough. There's a couple good ones, and I'll put them a link in the description for you guys to take a look at those to give you a better understanding of how the rules work. Hopefully, I explain them fairly well in this video to give you an understanding of what you need to do in this game, how you're going to do certain things. But the, the rulebook doesn't explain some things, or, or they're really hard to find, like the fact that only certain battles are one round while others are more than one round. Um, and the fact that all of these specific things that you do in the game are actually not that very complex, but it's very, very wordy in the rulebook. It explained almost too much, which uh, it would be better if I had like a reference section in the back. And each of the different things, if it was just layered better. If I had my wife doing the rules for this game, I think she would have helped them uh, greatly as far as that goes. Uh, but that being said, let's just talk about the gameplay itself. Now, this is a one to four player cooperative survival game in which you take place going from uh, event to event to event to to basically trying to achieve your objective or, or die trying. Um, if you like a fully immersive game, this is gonna be a, that type of a game. It's a mix of like sandbox and kind of a mix of like a single direction type game as well. 
You know it's coming up next, but you don't know what type of event it's going to be. You don't know what type of night card it's going to be, what items you're going to pull from the bag, but you do know what you're going to do next and what your objective is going to be. So there's a hint of randomness and a hint of control and strategy that you're going to have in this game. Uh, you're going to do your best to work with what you have to succeed. And making the best choices in this game doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do that. And it's kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Oregon Trail, that old old style um, PC game in which uh, you might ford the river and uh, you, you might do it ex exceptionally well and succeed and you, you, you get across quicker and easier. Or you might roll a one and, and then you're just in trouble. <laughs> and I, I love that game. That game is hilarious and it's a bit nostalgic for me. And this, this has that nostalgia, that old timey 1830s feel of forwarding the frontier, trying to uh, successfully battle mama grizzly bears or whether it just be a pack of uh, coyotes. Uh, there's a ton of different battles in this game that you're going to have to come across and deal with. Uh, maybe it's some golden egos, eagles, egos maybe, uh, or a mad hermit, or of course the, the, the scary grizzly bear, the wolf pack, uh, Todd and Vixen. In, two specific wolves. Wow, okay. And they all function differently. Some of the battles are more difficult than others, and it's just going to range based on the event deck that you've concocted at the beginning of the game, as well as, of course, the regions. You might walk into a region that gives you water or that takes water away. It giveth and backwards taketh away. It's, it, it's really how this game is going to go for you. Uh, you can kind of um, mitigate too, which I also like is choosing my own trait, choosing my own character. I like to be able to choose everything for the character as opposed to doing randomly. Everything should be chosen. That'd be my suggestion. Um, selecting certain things are going to be beneficial to you. Maybe one player should go super combat, the other player should go super heal, um, just to kind of keep the party alive as best as possible. The game is a challenge. Uh, because if everybody rolls perfectly well, then yeah, you probably do pretty well in this game. But the odds of that happening, not so high. You have to actually be prepared to suffer consequences, consequences in this game as things come up. And things are going to come up. And that's part of the uh, enjoyment of the game, too. You might have one round that works perfectly well for you, and another round that puts you on the brink of despair. And maybe that's kind of how the pioneers felt. I, 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 I couldn't tell you, but that does sound pretty accurate. <laughs> Snowstorm one day, sun, sunshine and, and happiness the other day. Uh, but this game does that exceptionally well. The, the theme is filled in this game. The quality of the components are excellent. The uh, progression of your character, being able to increase your insight as you defeat certain things, as you come across different events, you'll gain insight. And uh, being able to choose a type of, uh, of combative or fitness your character has, whether it's extremely survivability or maybe extremely uh, vital or not vital, but HP worthy, like tons of HP and healing a lot to where it doesn't even matter. This person might be frozen to their like core, but because they're so like filled with vitality, they just heal it all back up. And he's like, I don't care about the cold. I mean, I guess... Maybe Brandon would be kind of like that. He's kind of like got the burly beard thing going on here. Uh, but I, I really enjoy the customization of this game. I like that it's kind of sandboxy, but it's also kind of straightforward as to what's going to happen next. Uh, the artwork in this game is solid. This is the type of artwork I would want to see for a game like this. It is the type of feeling I like uh, because it has that organ trail-y type of a feel to it. It puts that uh, to, to really good use for this game. All the custom little meeples are excellent and the way the game explains uh, itself is done better here on the game board itself than it is in the rule book, in my opinion. This this here alone, this track, is an, a great example of how you can play the game and what you need to know and understand. And if you ever get confused, then you can check the rule book, check the references, and it'll give you a further explanation because you can kind of pinpoint and find it. Um, and of course, the fact that you have the melee and ranged characters, and uh, you can have the melee player like defend against the ranged player, and if you do, he's gonna take additional damage. So it's not just like he can tank. Because he can, but it's at a huge uh, penalty as well. And it might be worth it and it might not be. And you have to kind of weigh those decisions. There's a lot of decision making in this game. Story driven, a beautiful game. Yeah, I, I, I really like this game. Um, the one thing I'll say is it's random. Uh, There's uh, really hard uh, to get away from the dice rolling and, and skill checking and just seeing if you like it. D&D &D players are going to really enjoy this type of a game uh, fairly easily. I could say that Josh and Max are going to be really, really into this. Whereas Callie... 
No, she did not like this game. It was not for her. Uh, rolling ones a couple times in a row, like it, it pushed to the point where she's like, I don't like this. I'm not able to succeed. And it's like, well, yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes on the on the, on the frontier, you know? And and for me, I mean, I got kind of more lucky with some of my good rolls and also some bad rolls. We, we did eventually die uh, both games, um, but we still had a lot of fun. And, and the story is going to remain there for the next coming months. I'll remember what happened to me as... I attempted to get past the Mama Grizzly Bear uh, right after the snowstorm, and and it didn't go well for me. Kind of reminded me of that that movie with the wolves in Antarctica, uh, the frost. I don't know what it's called with Liam Neeson. You probably could tell me in the comments below. Anyway, Backwoods, a solid survival cooperative game. As long as you don't mind a bit of random chance and uh, as much control as you think you might have. What it comes down to is whether the wilderness and the beasts are going to play with well with, with others or not. Take a look at the game down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another unfiltered game or board game review of the game Backwoods. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, go ahead and hit up that link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. You can also join our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more reviews just like this game, but not from the videos here. You should be able to see different reviews of different games that we're not reviewing on video form by Brian and our other writers. You can also go ahead and join us on Patreon for a dollar. One dollar a month goes a long way to help us show you more games that uh, you may or may not have seen before. As we review a lot of Kickstarter content and a lot of content that is kind of singularly published by indie creators. And, uh... I know a lot of people are going to really enjoy this game along with other games similar in this style or in this vein. All right, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I hope the backwoods are a little bit more gracious to you than me next time.